All right, welcome. So in this video, I'm just going to walk through summation notation. This is just meant to be an introduction to what the notation looks like and not a comprehensive discussion of everything you might encounter with summation notation. It's just an introduction into the ideas so you know what you're looking at when you see the symbols going forward. So I'm going to write out what summation notation usually looks like in sort of an abstract way, and then I'll walk you through what each of the components mean and what they represent. So we write the sum from i equals n to k of a sub i, and we can expand that as a sub n plus a sub n plus 1 plus etc, etc. So we're counting up on those n's. We start at n and then we count up by 1. We count up until we get a sub k minus 1, and then we add a sub k. So we're adding up all of the terms a sub n all the way up to a sub k. All right, let's talk through what each of these pieces mean. So the first thing I drew is the Greek letter sigma. This is like the sideways E looking symbol. It's an uppercase or a capital sigma, and we use it to represent sums. So whenever you see this symbol, you can know that there's a sum, there's a bunch of adding happening. Then the I, which goes below the summation symbol, is the index. It helps us keep track of which element we are adding. So we're just using the index to keep track of all the things we're adding together, and it goes through from the start, which is the N, to the K, which is the finish. And if you hear people talking about summations, you might hear them talk about the indices. This is just the plural of index, and so this is the way we often talk about those sub notations, or the i's. So we see it again when we have a sub i. That i corresponds to the i that is the index below the summation symbol. Then we have n and k. n is just our lower bound, it's the number we're starting on, and k is the upper bound, the number we're finishing with. And just keep in mind, n and k are integers. They're usually positive integers, so it would be like from 0 to 10, where 0 is n and 10 is k, or something like that. You likely aren't going to see other things in those positions most of the time. You can just imagine that they are some sort of natural number or positive integers. Then the last thing is the a sub i. These are just our indexed terms. So these are the things that we're adding together, and each one changes as the index changes. So when we start at n, that's our a sub n, and then as we add 1, that'll be a new thing, a sub n plus 1, and we keep adding them together until we get to the final one, which is a sub k. So summation notation is just a way to write in a short version what might take a lot of space if we were to write out all of the terms. It's especially useful if we're doing like an infinite sum. So if k was an infinity, we couldn't possibly write out all the terms. So summation notation just gives us a smaller, more packaged thing to write out mathematically that's a little easier to look at and takes less time to write. Okay, so just to give you a little more practice with summations, let's do some examples. Okay, so for our first example, let's say we want to evaluate the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of i. So here, i is both the index and it's the term that we're adding over and over again. So what's happening is we're starting with i is 1, so I'm going to write 1, and then we increase by 1 each time. So we do 1 plus the next number, which is 2, 2 plugged in for the i. Then we're doing i equals 3, so we do 3, and then we have i equals 4, so plus 4. And then we've reached the upper bound, we've reached 4, so we've done this entire sum. So basically this sum says add everything from 1 to 4 where i is what the thing we're adding. So i equals 1, we add that to itself, then i equals 2, i equals 3, i equals 4, we're adding those together, and when we do that we get 10. So this sum is equivalent to 10. Okay, let's try it on another example. Let's say we want to expand the sum from n equals 0 to 10 of x to the n. So here, instead of using the variable i, I'm using n. We can use whatever variable we want. It's still the index. So we're starting at n is 0, and we're going up to 10. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. And those get substituted in for n. So the first one, n is 0, we're going to have x to the 0. Then n is 1, we're going to add x to the 1. n is 2 plus x squared. Etc. And we do this until we get up to x to the 9th, and then x to the 10th power. 
So this sum is like writing x to the 0 plus x to the 1 plus x to the 2, etc., all the way up to x to the 10. So again, on both of these examples, the index, the i, or I used n in the second example, is sort of like the variable that we're replacing each time, and we count up by 1. So we start at the lower bound, and then we just count up by 1 each time, and we plug in that new number and then add it to itself. Again, remember, this is just to give you a really brief introduction into how this summation notation works and how it looks like. I don't expect you to be a pro at it or know everything about it just from watching this video. Okay, let's try two more examples. I want to try going the other direction. So let's write 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth plus 1 sixth using summation notation. So already you can imagine that writing out all of these terms added together, it takes a while, it's hard to say, but once you have it in a sum, it's going to be more condensed and summation notation is a great way for us to do that. So looking at this, I need to notice a pattern. So I'm seeing here that what's increasing by one each time is the denominator of these fractions. So they have like one over one, then one over two, one over three, so that denominator is increasing. So I'm gonna write a sum and I'm thinking it's one over i, where i is my index. So that i, the denominator, is going to be increasing by one each time. And looking at this sum, it looks like I start at one for my denominator and I end at six for my denominator. So my index is going from i equals one all the way up to six. And looking at this summation, you should just check it for yourself in your head, think, okay, i is one, plug that in, I should get the first term. One over one is one, I get the first term. Then I increase by one, I'm plugging in i equals 2, so i equals 2 is 1 over 2, that's my second term. Then I increase to 3, it's 1 over 3, and I keep doing this until I get to 6, so 1 over 6. So this works, this is how we would write this sum using summation notation. Okay, and then for one more example, let's try one that looks a little different. So let's write 16 plus 25 plus 36 plus 49 using summation notation. So we could spend a long time just learning how to write these sort of pattern sums as summation notations, but for right now, we're just looking at the sort of idea, so don't worry if you're not immediately seeing the pattern. But I'm noticing that it seems like these are all squared numbers, so 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, so it looks like what I should have in my sum is i squared. And the first term we have is 16, so that's 4 squared. So I'm going to start as i equals 4. And then I'm going to end on 7, since I have 7 squared. So my upper bound is 7. I'm also just choosing to use i here. I could use a different variable. You could use whatever you want, really. I'm just using i, since that reminds me that it's the index. OK, so these are pretty basic summation problems, writing sums with summation notation. I just want to do one more thing with you. I think I said the last example was the last one, but I actually want to do one more thing just to show you another way that we might be writing summation notation and sort of explaining it mathematically. All right, so for this example, let me write it out and then we'll talk about how to handle it. So let's say we have a sub k is equal to 2k plus 1, and we want to evaluate the sum from k equals 0 to 2 of a sub k. So here I am telling you what the things are that we're adding sort of separately and then I'm writing the sum. So I'm saying we're going to sum up these a sub k's and then I'm telling you what a sub k is separately. So if we think about just the summation notation and we want to expand it out so we can evaluate it, so we can figure out what the actual solution is, I know that I'm going to start with k is 0, so that's a sub 0, and then I add 1, I'm doing a sub 1, and then 2, a sub 2. So we're going from 0 to 2, I plug in those numbers. Now I just need to figure out what a sub 0, a sub 1, and a sub 2 are. And I'm going to use the definition it gave me, which is that a sub k is 2k plus 1. So whatever that sub thing is, whatever that index is on the a, that's the number that we plug into this 2k plus 1. So for a sub 0, I do 2 times 0 plus 1, that's 1. For a sub 1, I do 2 times 1 plus 1, that's 3. And then a sub 2, I do 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. So that subscript, which is the index for that a, is just going in as the k value. It's going in as the variable. 
So what I really have here is I'm adding one plus three plus five, and that's giving me nine for my sum. And we've evaluated this sum. All right, just to wrap up, I wanna give one note. So sums can have a finite or an infinite amount of terms. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video when I was talking about that upper bound being infinite. So I just want to highlight here what that would look like, that we can have a finite or an infinite amount of things being added together. So we could have the sum from i equals 1 to, let's say, 57, just some random constant I picked, of a sub i. Or we could have the sum from i equals 1 to infinity. So it could be an infinite number of terms we're adding. And really, instead of writing 57, I could have written any constant like m. And this is just how you know if you're adding a finite number of things together or an infinite number of things together. All right, that is it for this video. Just a little introduction into summation notation. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.